Ok, episiotomy. So, episiotomy is referred to an artificial method of um, it's an artificial method um, done in order to promote the second stage of labor. Is it clear? It is an artificial method done in order to promote the second stage of labor. Usually, let's say that this is the um, the, the maternal um, pelvic outlet here. So let's say that this is the vagina here. This is the labia. Uh, majora, this is the labia majora here, and then we have the medulla, we have the clitoris up there. Is it clear? So let's say that the head is up here, but it cannot pass, it cannot extend, or it cannot pass through the pelvic, the head cannot pass through the pelvic outlet here. Is it clear? Because the pelvic outlet is very tight. Is it clear? The pelvic outlet is very tight. So in this case, what you need to do is so that you are going to, usually the best side is going to be this side here. Is it clear? So you can have different type of episiotomy. You have median episiotomy. Is it clear? You have uh, mediolateral episiotomy and you have lateral episiotomy. So those are different. You have median episiotomy. Median episiotomy is not very good because <clears throat> the media epidiotomy you see that what here the perineal bodies are directly below um the the posterior the posterior full shirt of the vagina so you have the perineal body directly below um, inferior to the posterior full shirt of the vagina this is the anterior full shirt and this is the posterior full shirt here so and these are the two different parts so if you cut here directly you are going to directly go to the anus is it clear and going to the anus like that you are going to impair you are going to create fistulas and all these type of things is it clear which you are going to see in the complication of perineal there so we have also a mediolateral incision which can be done so and we have also a lateral incision that can be done so episiotomy is an incision that is artificial incision done in order to promote the second stage of labor if you do a lateral incision lateral incision is not good because we have the branch of the internal pudenda artery which passes here like this is it clear? and when you cut at this level you are going to create excessive bleeding is it clear? so if you cut mid uh, mid you do a median incision you are going to produce what is going to, you are going to produce the complications of a, a perineal test a huge complication of perineal test like healing complication in the case of fistula formation is it clear? you are going to have um, pain extreme pain you are going to have <coughs> you have fistula you have infection is it clear? because of its direct contact to the anus is it clear? and you have even the pelvic instability pelvic instability like because the perineal body is going to be the major structure that attach that is involving um that's involving for the maintenance of the, the the perineum now if you do a lateral incision you are going to have huge hemorrhage huge bleeding is it clear? and it's going to be a cause of the postpartum hemorrhage so that's why the best is going to be the uh, mediolateral and it's best preferred the mediolateral on the right side than the left side you best to mediolateral on the right side and the left side so this is the best direction when you do episiotomy <coughs> Now, the, after working with episiotomy, episiotomy, if you do episiotomy, provided that the patient's head, the head of the fetus is larger than the pelvic outlet. Is it when the head is larger than the pelvic outlet, you now do episiotomy. Now, after episiotomy, you need to know now what they say, also what is called perineal tear. Is it clear? So we have episiotomy and perineal tear. Now, perineal tear is referred to any tear of the perineum as you can see as you you just know so perineal tear is defined as any tear of the perineum now that perineal tear you can you can divide it into you have uh, the different grades of stage of perineal tear you have stage one two stage four so stage one stage two stage three and then you have stage four is it a stage four perineal tear? So in stage one is when you have a tear to the vaginal mucosa. When you have a tear to the vaginal mucosa, I mean that what it's on this diagram. If you have a tear inside here, this vaginal mucosa. When you have a tear inside the vaginal mucosa, or you have a tear on the superficial perineal skin. So outside here, so this is also the perineum here. So if you have a superficial perineal skin or not involving the muscles, so so if you have vaginal mucosa, vaginal mucosa is inside the introitus. 
is it like you see it there yeah you see it there yeah inside the intro just the vaginal mucosa or you see it there at the level of the superficial perineal skin without involving the muscle so perineal skin is it clear without involving the model stage one it does not require any suturing is it clear <clears throat> now in stage two in stage two you need to know that in stage two perineal tear now you need to know that it is vaginal mucosa in stage one plus a perineal tear involving the muscles is it clear when there is a perineal a deep perineal tear involving the muscles so when you have muscles involved is it clear now the muscles involved can be the perineal muscles we have the different perineal muscles which are called we have one the transverse perineal muscle here is it clear we have the superficial perineal muscle which is um, at the level of the superficial perineal pouch you have the superficial perineal muscle at the level of the superficial perineal pouch and we have also the deep perineal muscle at the level of the deep perineal pouch is it clear so those are the different muscles that you have is it clear so those are the three perineal major perineal muscles that we have you have the transverse perineal muscle in the middle superficial perineal muscle outside and then the deep perineal muscle inside and we have also <clears throat> the perineal muscle attaching to the clitoris is it clear which are the bulbo the bulbo spongiosum and the issue cavernosum the bulbo spongiosum is it clear bulbo spongiosum and the ischio cavernosum is it clear so those are different muscles that you need to visualize the perineal muscles now when you have stage two you need to suture is it clear and when you suture you suture in two planes is it clear you suture inside so you suture in two planes is it clear suturing can be done in two planes you suture inside and then you suture outside inside generally the suturing that we do in the muscles is a crisscross is it provided I want to prevent uh, you do a crisscross suturing? Is it in this direction? You do like this, so you do like this suturing for the, the muscles. Generally, the muscle suture is crisscross. Is it clear? But particularly when you are, when you are doing crisscross suturing, is particularly in muscles which are very tense. The perineal muscles are not going to be <clears throat> having a very huge um, pressure, so you don't no need to do a crisscross suturing. Is it clear? So at the level of the perineal muscle, you can just do uh, um, intermittent suturing. Is it clear? Generally, those are the things that you do. You do intermittent suturing of the muscles. Don't do. It's not good to do a continuous suturing of the muscle because the healing process of the muscles is always going to have some expansion. So you can just do some um, intermittent suturing of the muscles. No need to do a continuous suturing of the muscles. So is it clear? So those are the things that you do at the level of the muscles. <clears throat> then this